Hello everyone. Welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Today we're going to do another fun block in Kimberbell's project called Quilting Through the Seasons. Today's block is going to be this stacked book block right here. This is going to be a fun one to make. So let's go ahead and head over to our embroidery machines and let's get started. I also want to give a huge shout out again. Thank you so much to my girlfriend's quilt shop for sponsoring me and sending me the CD, the embellishments and the fabric kit in order so that I can show you how to make this project. If you still need some of these supplies for this project, please visit my girlfriend's quilt shop using the link down below and help me give them a big thanks for supporting me and enabling me to make this video series for you. Huge thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My girlfriend's quilt shop. Okay, we're at the machine. I have put a new bobbin of white thread down below and I'm using my five by seven hoop for this block. And I've put a piece of poly no-show mesh stabilizer into that hoop. And now let's go to the screen cam and let's load the design. Okay, so I have a Brother Dream machine. If you have something similar, you can follow along. I'm going to click on embroidery and I'm going to go to my flash drive because I keep all of my files on a flash drive. Then I'm going to click on quilting through the seasons and I'm going to go to my quilting design subfolder because we need to load the quilting design first. So this block we're working on time and I'm looking for a four by six vertical. Okay, four by six vertical sideways. Two by six, two by eight, four by six. Here we go. Four by six vertical. Okay, we want it to go up and down, not horizontal, left to right. So this one we want vertical. It's a six and a half by four and a half inch, and that is correct. So we're going to click set. And then we're going to add a design. Now, if you have a machine where you can't add a design on top of this, no problem. Just stitch this out first, come back, clear your memory, and then load the main embroidered design and then stitch that out. But because I can add it on my machine, I'm going to go ahead and add it right now. So it'll have both of them in its memory. So I'm going to go back to the flash drive, back to quilting through the seasons. And now I'm going to go to the main quilt. And I'm looking for the stacked blocks, which is this one right here. That's vertical. So I'm going to click that. That's the one I want. Click set. It brings both of them in and automatically centers them. And this block, we want it to be centered. So we don't have to do anything. We just click embroidery and we are ready to go. I also want to give another thank you to another sponsor in this video, Kimberbell, for providing me with the quilting designs to be able to make this project absolutely amazing using their block by block quilting designs. Thank you so much, Kimberbell. And if you're interested in getting these quilting designs, please use the link in the description below and I'll take you right to it. And you can choose the bundle of the quilting designs, or you can also just get individual designs. If you like it all florals or all sayings, which I believe they call time, you can choose which designs you want to put in your project. So please check out the link down below for Kimberbell.com. So let's go back to the hoop cam. So I'm going to go ahead and take the thread that I have up at the top of the machine for the last block out. And I want to load white thread in the top of my machine. Okay. That way we can do several stitch outs and even do the quilting, which I think I'm going to do in white all with the same color thread. Okay, so go ahead and put white thread in the top of your machine for right now. And let's go ahead and stitch out the first stitch, which is going to be the placement line for the batting. Here we go. OK, 
Okay, and while it was stitching that out, I grabbed a piece of batting, which was seven inches by five inches right here. And then I also grabbed my plastic pouch system that is labeled number 11, stacked books, because that is what we're working on. So we got the fabric out there as well. So we're all ready. So here's my seven by five batting. Get any extra thread off there. I'm gonna lay down my batting and I'm gonna make sure that I cover that stitch line that it just stitched and make sure that I have a good amount on each side of it. And then I'm gonna tack it down. So just put the foot down, hold the batting down, but keep your fingers away from the moving needle, okay? Here we go. Perfect. So now I want you to take the hoop off the machine and go to a table and I want you to trim away the excess batting. Make sure you trim close, but try not to nick those stitches right there. Just trim all the way up to it. The main reason is we want to get rid of this excess so that it doesn't go into our seam allowance and bulk up our quilt. All right, I'll meet you right back here. So we're good to go now and I'm going to put the foot down. I'm going to stitch out the placement line for the fabric, I'm still leaving white thread in the top of the machine. Here we go. I'm gonna take the white thread out of the top of the machine and I'm gonna go ahead and put a dark gray thread in because I'm going to match the color of the fabric. So this is kind of a dark gray with polka dots, really cute. So I want to match that. So this dark thread, I'm going to put up on top and it'll just be for the stitch here where we're going to tack down the fabric. Let me get that out. Here we go. Okay. So then I'm going to place my fabric down and I'm going to line it up with the batting. I can feel the batting so I know exactly where that is and that's going to be where I'm going to place the fabric. Easy peasy. Okay. So put the foot down and let's tack down the fabric. Here we go. Perfect. So now I'm going to take that dark gray thread out of my machine and I'm going to put the white back in. The reason I'm going to do the quilting in white is because I want the text, the words to actually show and then the books will go on top of it. So I want the wording to be visible and stand out. So I'm going to put white thread in the top of the machine and we're going to stitch this out. It is a six minute in real life stitch out. So let's fast forward, enjoy, and let's stitch this quilting. This is gonna be fun to watch. Here we go.
That is really cool. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch the placement line and we can go ahead and still leave the white thread up above and stitch this one out. So foot down and here we go. One minute stitch out. Okay, so we can go ahead and take the hoop off so we can see what we're doing and lay this little piece of fabric, which is kind of like a, a beige, down on top, making sure that we are covered in all directions, top, bottom, and the two sides. Okay, so we put the hoop back on and we can leave white thread up on top to tack this down because it's gonna be a decorative, like a satin stitch that goes on top of this that'll hide it. So we don't have to switch the color thread at this point. You can still use white up above, all right? Let's go ahead and tack this fabric down. Here we go. Okay, so now let's take this hoop off the machine and let's go over to the table and we're gonna trim away all of the excess fabric from around the outside edges. Okay, we're back at the machine. I'm gonna put the hoop back on. That's all trimmed up. Now we're still gonna leave white thread up above. We're gonna stitch out the placement line for the spine and the next two books. So white thread can stay up on top. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to place the larger of the ivory fabric pieces that we had in our pl plastic pouch onto that area. And I wanna make sure that I come down to here, which is the bottom of the book, and actually cover that as well. I'm plenty good on the top and on the bottom. I'll double check the top. Yep, a little bit more that way. Okay, so we're good. We're covered all the way where we need to be, all right? So let's go ahead and put the foot down, still use white thread up above, and let's tack down this fabric. Here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna take the hoop off the machine and we're gonna go over to the table and we're gonna trim around and cut away the excess fabric from that outline. Okay, here we go. So now the next three stitches are going to be accent of satin stitches on these books. So we're going to use two different colors of thread to accent this. And Kimberbell's recommending a light taupe and a cream. So pick a light taupe and a cream if you're following this color scheme from your collection that complement each other. So these two will look very good together. This blends in, it's not an exact match, but it'll blend in nicely with that fabric. And then those two will go nicely with that. So the first color you wanna put in is this taupe, the darker of the two colors. Okay, so put that thread in the top of your machine. Take the white out. 
You're almost done. You're getting really good at this, huh? Yes, you are. All right. It feels good to see the blocks come together, to see it being created in front of your eyes and that you are creating it. That's the part I love the most. Oops. A little snag on that one. There we go. It happens sometimes. Just trim it off. Make sure you're threaded. You're good. Okay, so this is a four minute stitch out in real life. And we're going to stitch out two of the accent areas on one of the books. Okay, let's do it. Okay, that looks great. Okay, so now we're going to take that taupe thread out and I want you to put the lighter cream thread in the top of your machine. Okay, don't put the taupe away too far because we're going to use that taupe thread again for the next stitch. But this stitch, we need the lighter cream color thread. Okay, oops. Okay, here we go. Oh, and there's a loop, and you know what we do with loops, we get them out. No loops. There we go. Don't want to break a needle, or worse, okay? So let's put the foot down, and let's stitch this out. In real life, it's about seven minutes. Let's fast forward and enjoy the stitch out. Here we go. Okay, so now we're going to get that taupe thread that we used earlier and we'll put that back in the top of the machine. And you realize you're on the last step. You got this. After we stitch this out, the stitching for this block will be done. Yahoo! You got this. You ready? Okay, foot down and let's stitch this out. It's a four minute and real life stitch out. Here we go. Yahoo! You did it! You finished another block! Isn't this cute? There we go. You can see it now. Isn't that cute? Okay, so let's take the hoop off the machine and let's go to the table and let's finish up this block. 
All right, this turned out really cute. And Kimberbell, they know how to do cute. I'm telling you. All right, so go ahead and take the block out of the hoop. There we go. Put that aside for now. And then we're going to square up this block. Now this block is going to be four and a half by six and a half inches. So I'm going to look for this outer stitch line, the dark gray one that we use to tack down this fabric. We're going to look for that and we're going to measure the block based on that. So if I do that from this stitch line to this stitch line at six, just over six and a half, just a hair. Okay. And I go from here over to here. It's four and a half, just over four and a half. So that's where I'm going to square up the block. Okay. So for the first one, I'm going to look for that dark gray stitch line and I'm going to put the ruler just on top of it. Use my rotary cutter and trim that away. Okay. And don't worry about this quilting line that where they did a turn on the quilting that is going to be in your seam allowance. So that edge will not be seen. Okay. So now I'm going to use my cutting mat and go one, two, three, four, five, six, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. All right. And that is just right on the stitch line. So double check, make sure everything is good. That is six and a half. And we trim that up. We're good on that side. And on this is going to be four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and look for that first dark gray stitch line and go just a hair past it. Okay, measure this up. One, two, three, four and a half is going to be just a hair past the stitch line. Make sure I got it right. Here we go. And four and a half. Okay. Isn't that a cute block? You did a great job. Now there's one thing left to do, but we're going to wait to do this. And that's going to be hand sewing the twine that's in the embellishment kit to this block. I choose to do that at the very end after I've sewn some of the surrounding blocks to this one as we're assembling the final quilt so that that twine doesn't get in the way of us sewing the blocks together. So I'm going to wait to do that. But when we get to that stage, I will walk you through how to add the twine to this block. So I hope you had as much fun making this block today as I did. And I hope you stay tuned here on Jolly Molly TV for more fun and more blocks in this amazing project by Kimberbell Quilting Through the Seasons. So until I see you again, take care and happy stitching. Bye-bye.